you welcome uh, to the issues with me Irbad Ibrahim and today uh, the finance minister honorable Ken Uforiata was on the floor of the August house to present the CS budget and so many you know fallouts have already happened in the past few hours and uh, government calls this um, Ghana working again and uh, the opposition says budget made in China. It also says a Hochera budget uh, and a host of others. Uh, today we'll do a critical analysis of what went down uh, on the floor of parliament and find out what the projections are uh, in terms of the socio-economic well-being of the good people of this republic. I have in the studios uh, an economist and uh, a lecturer at the Institute and a member of the Institute of Chartered Economists of Ghana, uh, Reverend Dr. Samuel Wolanyo. Sir, yes, sir, you're welcome to the Thank show. You very Good much. to see you Thank all you. the time. Nice meeting you. Yes, and then from the minority side of Parliament, member of the uh, Finance Committee, uh, Honorable uh, Benjamin Pudu. Honorable ben Benjamin Pudu is also the MP for Go Central. Honorable. Thank you so much for making My time. Pleasure. And look, um, we will shortly be joined so by Honorable Anthony Effa, MP for Isikuma. Honorable just arrived. Uh, Honorable, uh, Honorable Anthony Effa is MP for Isikuma, Odo Bim Brakwa. He's also a member of the Finance Committee. Honorable, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Looking all bubbly and yeah, happy. Yeah. Um, your government calls this. A budget of Ghana working again. Yeah. What is working for the good people of Ghana? Well, I think we would like to say good afternoon to our church viewers and to uh, let them feel at ease. The budget that came today is just to tell them or to assure them that uh, 2019 is going to be a good year. We've gone through some challenges. Uh, if we have to recount from 2015 2016 there really were big issues difficult times interest rates were high uh, growth rates were very low like 3.5 percent per annum in 2016 um, we had agriculture growing at, at, at a minimal just three uh, percent industry was negative showed negative growth services sector did not grow significantly and of course, we all remember the policy credibility issue that sent us to the IMF. So we really had a very terrible economy. And then when in 2017 of January, MPP came to power, we, we said that, let us take responsibility for the challenges of Ghana and Ghanaians. And um, in 2017, we tried to, as it were, uh, work on the challenges of the economy that we inherited. In 2018, we tried to also establish some of the authorities or, shall I call them, institutions that will help us deliver on our promise to the people of Ghana. So in 2018, we initiated some of our flagship programs. Um, I'm sure we'll give the details as we go along. And then um, today we had the minister tell us about how much we've achieved, how far we've come as a country under the uh, government of Nana Kufado and is telling us in 2019. Yourself, your financial sector, I'm sure we'll delve into all the challenges, the, the various sectors of the economy. But um, just as by way of introduction, okay. to indicate that we've come that far okay. as a people okay. and that uh, we did not wait for the challenges of the past to overweigh us. Okay. But we, we were able to work okay. very hard enough okay. um, in the midst of difficulties with revenue mobilization. Thank you so much. Honorable Anthony Efa, he's a member of the majority side of parliament. Uh, Honorable, 
He says this is a budget of total development. You are calling it a budget of pessimism, a budget of hardship, and a budget made in China. What informs such, you know, strong descriptions? Yeah, well, let me say good evening to you, people of Ghana. Uh, my sympathies to them for the hardships that they are suffering for this government. Let me state straight away that my colleague made reference to them coming to power to rescue uh, Ghanaians. He mentioned a catalogue of uh, events which he thought made them to come. But I want to emphasize that the, the lie, they didn't come to power on the goodwill of the people. They lied themselves to power. And as a result of that, hardships have been imposed on Ghanaians because of unfulfilled promises. And this budget does not do anything to alleviate their uh, hardships. Indeed, you should expect that it is going to continue uh, until some help comes from somewhere in 2020. I want to say that going through listening to the Minister of Finance yes, sir. at a certain point it's like you newsmen producing headlines. It was just like it's a collision of newspaper headlines. We have employed 100,000 people under NAPCO. We have employed so many people for planting their food, planting for food and jobs. We have uh, that, that's, those are the kind of things that you, you hear from the newspapers on a daily basis when the president or the mini, one minister talks somewhere. And you hear those things. So all these have been collated and presented as a, a budget. Indeed, we we have seen through it and have, pro, pro, uh, have agreed that going forward into 2019, with these same policies, the hardships will just continue. With the high fuel prices that we have, where fuel was uh, 14 CDs per gallon at the time NDC, MPP took over, or at the time NDC left. Now it is uh, exchange 4 CDs per gallon. Uh, the exchange rate of the CD in December, according to the Bank of Ghana publications, in December uh, 2016 was 3 CDs 92 pesos to the dollar. And uh, as we are sitting here now, it is four CDs, 91 pesos to the dollar. All these things have culminated in high prices. Of course, certain policies in, in, introduced by the, the government at the ports of importation of goods have also led to higher uh, import duties being paid by traders, especially from Albuquerque, kind. And uh, new taxes which have been introduced against the promise have led to uh, hardships to the citizens of Ghana and the borrowings that have come against their promise to stop uh, getting loans from outside have also led to pressures on the budget uh, towards the payment of interest rates. So as a result of all this, there's no fiscal space to you know, do uh, the things that they, they, they promise. So they have had to be going out for loans, for loans. And since they assumed office, according to the finance minister today, as at September, our debt has risen to 170.8 billion. That is roughly 171, up from 122. And we are talking of 22 months that they have borrowed uh, 48 to 49 billion uh, Ghana cities to add to the debt, debt, uh, debt, debt stock. So I do not really see where 
this issue about what did you call it? I don't know the three word you go <laughs> something. Um, punto um, punto. Um, punto. Punto budget. Total development. Total development. So I don't know where these things are coming from. Now, if Why if somebody talks I, about if somebody talks be? about improvement in or infrastructure, and uh, the reason why people are calling it uh, made in China is that they are depending mm. on the Sino Hydro loan uh, of two billion, which has been brought to Parliament, five hundred mil, uh, million dollars of which has been uh, uh, is being asset for the uh, mm. uh, road projects. Maybe that's why they are saying they are going to do development, in, uh, infrastructure development. And that is why people are calling it made in China budget. But whether it is made in China, whether it is a uh, uh, no hope budget, the sum of it all is that it is going to continue uh, hardships. But Honorable, how can you con uh, categor categorically state that it's going to continue the hardship when agriculture is up 4.3%, industry is up 17.7%, services are up 4.7%, and we pay less for electricity? Please, services, including the financial services sector, have gone down. Financial and insurance uh, uh, indices have grown in negative. You, you, the, 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 I can show you the Ghana uh, Statistical Service details which they have brought. I can show you it on my phone. It, it has not grown, it has rather shrunk. So, uh, whatever you say, go and ask the guys at Abose Okai. Go to Kufuda Market where the other day you played the. <laughs> clip for us yes. that they said oh, VAT has been decreased. They should go now and ask them whether they are bearing uh, the, uh, the five percent increase in prices as a result of that change, that com cosmetic change which was uh, done to decouple the, the uh, get fund levy and the Ghana Health Insurance levy from the VAT, which he that to was recoverable as an input tax but we have taken off and made straight levies go and ask them whether they are not feeling the pinch now recently the telcos announced a five percent increase in their charges when you make calls when you send messages by text you pay five percent more and that is the five percent difference which they could no longer recover from the total 17 and a half percent distance. So when we, we saw through it and told them, <coughs> oh, they said, no, the VAT had been uh, uh, held constant at 12 and a half percent. Now we are seeing the suffering. So all of these things have culminated into hardship for okay. the, the, um, the um, I'll come Canada. to you. I know you will have a rebuttal. Doc, um, we have had a sense of both sides of parliament. And uh, from where you sit as an independent economist, do you see this as imbuing the Ghanaian public with hope and confidence? Or is it as pessimistic as Honorable Podu wants us to believe? Well, thank you very much and blessed uh, evening to fellow Ghanaians. I think uh, both MPP and NDC are doing their best. And then the, something better can be done. Now, a, a budget is a working tool, it's a working document that uh, um, purely stated clearly as to how a country should be governed within a, a stipulated period of time. We talk about its income and expenditures and how the policies and the programs and projects of the government should be carried out or implemented. So um, every good budget needs to have certain ingredients. Uh, so we need to look at the budget and see whether the budget contains those ingredients. Number one, you realize that the budget must be able to address uh, educational infrastructure. And for instance, if you have a um, free SHS okay. policy, which uh, to me personally, I, I know it's a laudable program. Okay. Because for every nation to develop, you need to develop educational wise to have a, a sound uh, educator society. Now, by, by implementing the free SHS, it, faces uh, numerous challenges uh, for instance uh, uh, classroom uh, facilities uh, we have issues concerning the accommodation 
that's uh, both a uh, hostel or dormitory. Uh, some schools uh, lack um, uh, libraries, uh, some lack uh, science laboratories, some also lack ICT centers. So government should be able to um, provide resources in order to solve these problems. So that is one. Two, we're talking about the major infrastructure development. That is one, in terms of rules. Two, in terms of um, railway development. Three, in terms of uh, aviation sector development. And four, you can also talk about harbor developments of ports and harbors. And um, I think government should be able to China resources have programs and policies that will address the needs as being envisaged by the uh, maybe present condition. Now, the other issue that the government equally needs to tackle uh, via its budget is uh, as to how to add um, advancement to technology. So I think that um, in a globalized world now, it's, it's, a, it's driven by technology. And even if we are talking about um, digital address system, we need a strong technological base. Without a strong technological base, sometimes you go to banks and uh, you'll be told that the system is down. It's simply because the, the, the technical base is not solid, it's not sound. So at the end of the day, uh, uh, the, the rate at which the country is supposed to grow and develop will be, will be impeded. So government needs to invest much into technology. Be brief with this for me, Doc. You mentioned infrastructural boom in the areas of railway, education, yes. and then aviation, aviation and the and ports and harbors. Exactly. And the finance minister says the railway sector that has been moribund uh, for half a century now will be up and kicking next year. Does that imbue you with some hope? I, I, I think I think it's um, it's a laudable one because the rail has been dormant for for years. And when we look at uh, the performance of the Greek sector, I think um, by and large it's been affected by the absence of the real railway. So if railway will be revamped again and put in, in action, I think it's going to help in food production. Okay. And uh, we will uh, gradually also be able to mitigate and solve the issue that will arise from the post harvest losses. Honorable, Doc has set a very good preamble. Uh, I hear now for government when whatever people say, it's okay, we brought you free SHS. And why do you starve other sectors of the economy and then pump everything into free SHS? Obviously, that is how economies are run because we have limited resources. Uh, every economic student will tell you that that is the fundamental understanding that you need to prioritize. It's a, a, a policy choice by the MPP. Knowing how important human resource development is, we decided to allocate more resources to developing the uh, human capital, human capital of the country. But we are looking beyond four years and eight years. We look at uh, Ghana, where they uh, would have a record graduate uh, number of unemployed graduates. We won't have youth who at 16 have left basic education and they're out of school yes. and they don't have any job. So investing so much money in education is actually planning our future, developing our future. So um, obviously some other sectors will suffer if that is your priority. And as you will have turned around and say let's ignore education and go to maybe agriculture. The education is going to suffer, agriculture will boom. So these are natural or rational uh, actions of government that will lead to some having more or less. But then the, the reality again is that all the other sectors have received attention in the past where almost uh, I think all the uh, real sectors of the economy, agri uh, industry and then services, uh, services and all have all shown positive growth. For me it is the the turn of events and from services, your colleague, the Honorable MP, says we are right. We, we are in the right. Let, We'll go to the details of the services sector. You see, the, the, the banking sector itself, at the time before the five banks were collapsed into one consolidated bank, yes, we had about 36 banks running. And the total asset of this five banks plus the earlier two, Capital Bank and UT Bank, 
makes up 9.8 percent of the total banking uh, assets this information was provided by the governor of the bank of Ghana at a committee meeting so we can't dispute that what that means is that while about 10 percent of the banking sector is suffering 90 percent is doing well you understand so we are not in the type of depression or crisis which uh, my colleagues on the other side uh, announced recently it's only panic 90 percent is doing well now government had learned from the pro the, the, the failure of the government the uh, ndc government when dkm the issues came up that look we looked on for depositors to lose all their resources lifetime savings this time government will just buy the bullets and rescue customers whose monies ordinarily will go down the drain because the banks were insolvent and illiquid. So government said, look, let me take responsibility for your deposits and my deposits mm. and then take time to recover some of these monies from the owners of the businesses because ordinary shareholders obviously have the last um, when it comes to the priority of claims and uh, I'm sure the accountants know this very well. So the, sh the shareholders of the banks or the financial sector that has collapsed would now have to make do with payments from the assets. Now this has to go through the court processes. Now if the government had said let us wait, let us recover these assets or the monies from the directors and the shareholders before you, uh, the PAB and I had a point. We're not going to provide money for school. We're not going to provide money for the for the kitchen. And government said no, let's not do that. So government has taken responsibility to provide liquidity. In fact, in today's message, which for me is one of great hope. The minister said to us that the microfinance companies and the civil service companies also have customers who have deposits or money locked up with these institutions. And we're going to work around that also. So the focus now is on the banks. And altogether, there are about 1,500,000 depositors with these seven banks that have collapsed. 1.5 million. And the total deposit amount, which was at risk of loss, is 9 billion cities. And so a government that takes responsibility for what ordinarily it's not its liability and decides to save families, decides to save businesses. You see, when we say deposits, people usually would limit it to you and I, our salaries go there and we have some little savings. That is not it large corporates, hotels, transport owners, businesses, they keep monies in the banks. Okay. And but, so oh, no. if a, a bank should go down, okay. it's going down with all these businesses. Mm -hmm. It's going down with every individual family's income. Okay. So coming to the rescue of the banking okay. sector, I believe it's a good thing the government has done. Okay. Uh, Honorable, yes. uh, you gave a diamond review of the services sector including the banking sector we now have people who before now were working for bridge capital and they sell meat they are kebab sellers some are uber drivers and uh, yeah, honorable mp says they had to take those radical measures uh, to protect the depositors don't you think it's a step in the right direction well uh, let me first of all go back to the issue about the recession in the finance sector. This is a report by the Ghana Statistical Service showing that there is uh, the financial and insurance sector of Ghana is in a recession. 2017 quarter 1 negative 11.2 quarter 2 negative 8.6 quarter 3 25.5 percent the negative or positive? Also negative. And quarter four, negative 25 percent. So these are not my reports. You can access this. This is the publication by the uh, Ghana Statistical Service, which does every uh, statistics for us, including the GDP, the ratios, and so on and so forth. So uh, what I'm saying is not just a perception that is the official publication 
the calf. Um, secondly, about the problems facing the banking sector, we, we are all aware uh, what improper governance activities uh, of uh, our banks uh, were engaged in, and that led to the collapse of those banks. I have no qualms about some of the measures taken by the Bank of Ghana. But the fact remains that there is a recession in the sector. Those things have happened. And it is as a result of these things. Because people cannot access uh, their funds from the newly uh, created banks, uh, the, the CBD. People cannot ask. In fact, my younger sister has a deposit of 10,000 Ghana CDs with beige, which has been brought into uh, this uh, consolidated bank of Ghana. And she can't access I money. went there yesterday. The thing had matured for over three weeks now. I went, they asked us to fill some forms, asked me to come back. Two weeks I went, it was not ready. Another one more week I went there. They, they just told me that I should go and check at any branch of CBD in the country to see whether it is ready. So people are still not accessing their funds because hmm. the bank does not have the liquidity to meet the needs of this group. So they are only hoping that one day their monies will be given to them. And he knows, he is very actively involved in uh, microfinance management. So he knows that many of the microfinance companies have lodged their monies with these banks which have collapsed. And so uh, the owners of the funds are unable to access this. So there is uh, a decline in financial activities. That is why these records are showing. It is true that people cannot access their funds to continue to do business. That is a fact. So until Oh, no, these banks, until these banks are properly recapitalized, that they can meet the demands of the uh, depositors, there will be a decline in their financial activities. This is the practical aspect of it. I'm not uh, uh, disputing the fact that Bank of Ghana intervention is, is okay, but to the extent that people cannot access their funds, there is a decline in financial activity on the market. That is it. No. But, but let me, let me uh, uh, come to a point which I started. And, uh, you see, in the uh, budget, in the budget, you project revenue, as you were saying, and project expenditure. But if consistently we continue to do, I, that is my personal view, if we continue to do this kind of deficit budgeting, the consequence is that we will choke our future budget uh, with interest payment. At the moment, the minister announced today that we want to use about 14 billion, 14 billion plus to pay interest. Whereas we use about 19.4 to pay wages. So just add that over 30, about 34 uh, percent, 34 billion going to only those two. So there is no space in the budget. That is why I am of the view that this uh, uh, a flare for borrowing, borrowing from local, that is domestic and external sources to fund projects outside our ability is is creating huge problems for us and into the future. Yeah. If we are talking of borrowing for 30 years or a century bond, it means we are consigning the future, future revenues for, a century. Yeah, for, for so long. And so we are asking our children, we are telling them that they don't have any space. We are using the money for them and, and, and making them to come and pay debt and interest. Because all of us sitting here, who are borrowing for 30 years, who are borrowing for 50 years. I don't know whether we are going to be around to be servicing those debts. Okay. And okay. what are we spending these monies on? Are they a, a project that can generate produce money. Uh, funds, can generate funds to even service the debt? Well, we are here. But there are some of the projects you think are flat. They won't, you know, like the National Cathedral, you mean? Well, the National Cathedral, I understand 
initially they said it was not going to be funded by government but in this budget the uh, the minister has announced announced a seed money to be given out by government but that is not essentially uh, what will took uh, the, the nation but if you borrow to just spend on everyday activities free senior high school uh, napco you see you are giving money to uh, uh, about hundred thousand people whom you have not provided the jobs for you see you are giving them money now when they be returns napco you know participants will no, not be sleeping home please, please just go uh, the amount of money you know, what, what, what you have you want to do is go to the uh, organizations to which they have been posted one they don't have offices to sit in two they have not assignments to do this is it maybe not 100 percent of them but a very large uh, a larger than half proportion have nothing to do you understand the point maybe uh, over time they may get something but for now they have gone there no jobs for them but we are giving them stipends you see mm -hmm. so that kind of money three billion just giving out is, is what we are concerned about that you borrow to do this it doesn't produce anything when you think of borrowing to do the actual okay. gas plant it is an income generating project that's the kind of thing our government was uh, okay. doing honorable i'll come back to you and um, doc yes, some tinge of pessimism here and optimism over there uh, if we borrow to invest in social interventions, that will keep uh, unemployed youth lucratively engaged. Don't we get returns on our investment as a country? Uh, thank you very much. I think since uh, the last administration, I continue to say this, that no country in the world developed without running a deficit. And if you have a budget deficit, that's not equate that the economy is not doing well. Now, for a country to grow, you need a sizable amount of money to invest into productive activities. Exactly. And if really you want to industrialize the country, you spend, you need to spend a lot. So I think I put it this way. If you want to stop borrowing, you need to borrow. So if really we want to stop borrowing, we want to uh, take up um, a business, investment and stop all this kind of aid then this is the time for us not i'm not talking about the, the current administration this is the time as a nation that we need quantums of money to turn the economy around now america as usa japan even germany to a large extent america ran a deficit budget deficit for close to 200 years before they were able to turn the economy around even acts of China. China also did the same thing. So even today, America is still borrowing and is running in deficit sometimes. Now, the borrowing must not go into recurrent expenditures. It must go into capital investment. Without that, then it becomes a curse, not a blessing. So even when we look at the century bond, for even a country to qualify for such a bond, meaning the economy is doing well. Okay. But nobody will give you such huge amount of money when there is no um, hope, kind of hope, hope of in, in your economy. Okay. But then, it's equally a trap for you. Because if those funds and resources have not been utilized well, at the end of the day, it becomes a case. Okay. Thank you so Generations much. Generations are born. Okay. We are going to pay for, for that. And Honorable, you promised Ghanaians that you wouldn't go cap in hand and uh, to borrow just as your predecessors did. You said you would take us out of the IMF conditionalities that have strangled us over the past few years. Where do we stand on borrowing and what is our future with all uh, this uh, huge quantum of borrowing? You stand at a little over 48 billion in less than two years. Yeah, um, the, the nominal value or the stock of debt it's not what is of importance at the point where we are discussing debt or borrowings. It is a sustainability, how can you repay it? And then in about 2016, 
the debt to GDP ratio was about 73 percent. That was killing. Now we we were able to manage it below 70 percent in 2017. Now this rebasing has even brought it lower to about 55, 57 percent. Now rebasing is just transforming the old into a new base here and then having the new numbers. So we may not rely on that. But what that means is that we now have an expanded economy and whatever the desktop um, the ratio of that desktop to GDP is like 54-57%. So it even gives us more room to borrow if we wish. NPP government is doing a combination of raising uh, domestic revenue it is also doing some borrowing but what is most important for us which is a novelty is trying to use our natural resources to leverage for monies so that we can do our infrastructure this country needs a lot of development so much that if we had to depend on ourselves like my colleague rightly said and the history the economic history of ghana indicates that you spend almost 100 percent of your tax revenue on three items basically the wage the wage bill okay and then you service your loans mm -hmm. and then start to treat payments those are mandated that by all means which you have as, kept. Uh -huh, as long as you <laughs> generate revenue you have to transfer to these institutions and then you are empty your hands are empty now, if a, a, a government is just going to supervise, collect taxes, pay these three institutions, and sit back. And the, the revealing uh, point I saw last week, I was reading through some papers, and I got to know that only 6% of the population of Ghana actually even pays taxes. Only 6%? 6%. Yes. The, the VAT penetration in Ghana... 1.5 million. Yes. The VAT penetration in Ghana... It's about 11 percent when the universal average is about 24 25 percent so we are not paying our taxes we are not paying our taxes so if we must reduce the level of borrowing as a country not as a party but as a country then we Ghanaians should take that challenge let's take up that responsibility let us declare uh, our incomes appropriately and pay the appropriate in, um, taxes and the government will be able to generate internal revenue mm -hmm. and it will minimize this otherwise we need water we don't have taxes to to give us water we'll be compelled to borrow it doesn't matter whether it's mpp or NDC. we'll continue to borrow i thought, no no, well, I thought your government said it had strengthened the regime within the tax collection yes many many, many 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 um, now, without a 10, you can't even transact basic business. Yes, in and Africa. that is how we want to get many more people into their tax net, where 6% are paying and taking care of, net, including them, 100%, 6% taking care of the needs of 100%. But when we have the 10 and we expand the base, the tax base, then um, even if it is small, we contributing to it. One good thing about the 2019 budget is this that the opposition had come out quickly to say that they were going to kill us with taxes, new taxes. In fact, they are rather tax reliefs for those who take minimum <laughs> minimum um, wages. They will not be taxed at all. There was no introduction of any new tax. The initiatives that will help us grow our economy over time is let us improve the compliance the tax, the rev, uh, the tax collection within our. Oh, no, oh, no, I'm, I'll move to your colleague, but I'll push this in, but keep it short and sweet for me. Uh, if you say there is relief uh, for ordinary Ghanaians, you know our activities revolve around how much we pay for petroleum, for mm -hmm. fuel. It seems like it seems you've not been too sensitive to the plight of Ghanaians. How do you answer that? No, I was making reference to taxation. When I say there there was no introduction of new tax, but rather reliefs. And we had a record of 2070 where we, we took away eight taxes, new taxes, we call it at the time. So <laughs> essentially, <laughs> what we say is that what the uh, NDC thought this body was going to do was to send people to hell. And yesterday I heard one of them say, You don't tackle the petroleum issue, honorable. Of course, the petroleum issue. 
there used to be a task component cumulative of about 40 percent 41 percent now it is 24 percent we couldn't have maintained that the 40 percent so all that the government can do is the uh, the tax element that the government imposes on the petroleum products and we have reduced it from about 40 percent to 21 percent so that in itself shows that about half of the taxes on petroleum products is reduced that should be an incentive times i'm sure people who pay electricity bills uh, their bills now have some satisfaction by virtue of reductions and so the economy isn't Got into the point where we all be relieved or happy okay. that everything's okay. good. Okay. But we're still no. developing. Okay. And let's remember we've done twenty two months. Okay. Twenty two months, the intention of government cannot be fulfilled in all the twenty two months. So okay. We Thank still you. are working at this. We are hopeful okay. every single promise of the party okay. will be delivered before and the end of our time. One B one F, one village, one dam one constituency one million usd and all that they are saying these promises will be fulfilled they need time so maybe we need a two-term you know regime <laughs> for us to compare the figures satisfactorily yes were well, you doing see. this well during your first 22 months you see i alluded to the fact that he came into office allowing their whistle you, you knew that the people will be expecting you to build factories for them. People will be expecting you to give them one million in every constituency. So when you come to power, and after two years, they are telling us that uh, you, you, are, you are still waiting to do it within the next two years or another term, then it's, it's something uh, going sour. You see, uh, every promise that you make, you must assess yourself that you are capable of delivering on it. They have failed in that regard. I can give you a catalog. 1D, 1F has failed thus far. One, when I say 1D, let me break it down properly. One district, one factory has failed thus far. Every day they keep giving different figures. Uh, regarding different the timelines. Yes, yeah, different. Right. Even the different figures, sometimes they say 19, sometimes they say 51, sometimes they say 108 districts have already got, got factories. So I, I, they have failed in that regard. Then the 1 million to every constituency is dead. Uh, the Minister for Special Initiatives has himself announced that the monies have expired. <laughs> and they, they keep on... Yeah, I, I think it was publicly announced by her. I heard her say it directly into my ears that when you don't give any project to the Ministry of Finance, they will not uh, release the funds. So that one is gone. The money has expired. They said they will not impose taxes on this nation and he was referring to a reduction in taxes or abolition of new Zealand taxes please that is a fluke complete fluke all the several taxes listed by the minister of finance that they have uh, abolished when you total the amount is is not even up to one tenth of what they get from the national fiscal stabilization levy which they, they continue to impose because that uh, levy was imposed by the NDC and it had a sunset clause which was to end December 2017. They have reimposed it as a new tax. The special import levy has been reimposed as a new tax. They have imposed a 2% import tax uh, for the AU, African Union. It's a new tax. And the luxury vehicles tax is a new tax. So. Again, they promise not to impose taxes, but they have imposed all of these taxes. That is what I want the people of Ghana to know. They have imposed the get fund levy and the MHI levy as new taxes, which previously were not taxes because you could 
uh, claim it, you can recover it by the input output uh, accounting for VAT. So they are all new taxes. So they have told us they will do something, they have not done it. Now, when we, we, we come to the infrastructure projects that they are, I can show you from the records that there is nothing new in what the minister presented today. This budget was presented on 15th November 2017 for implementation in 2018. I'm concerned about my, my, my roads, the whole township roads. So you see this thing here, the dualization of whole main roads, construction of whole bypass. This was presented on uh, 15th November. Doc, the road passing the front of your office in Ho. Now, in the... Okay, here we also had the just kind road in this budget. In the media review, the same roads were listed. And today, paragraph 115, of this budget the same roads have been, have been listed so for three consecutive occasions these same roads are being recycled yeah. for no, wait for wait for they, are being, time. they are being recycled for announcement purposes for mm -hmm. propaganda purposes not that they have been done but uh, <laughs> uh, 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 so, one so i do see uh, because many Ghanaians can't demystify the complexities of a budget mm -hmm. so if you keep doing carry forward keep changing mm -hmm. timelines mm -hmm. roads that are palpable and visible for people to see uh, have made it through different three different phases of your budget mm -hmm. a major one a media review and a major one this time mm -hmm. how do you answer to that no. you uh, yesterday to yesterday i was with, uh, with my honorable member of who central mp for who central and then uh, he spoke to the minister for roads and there is work ongoing the asphalt thing all the rules that he's he's talking about is here he can deny that the minister told him that he's asphalting his roads he's doing the the, uh, the university the, the campus uh, roads he's doing all that he's going to there are two other roads that the minister is going to do so until you complete a road you cannot take it out of your project because you cited it in a previous budget until the roads are done you have to keep reporting if you come to my constituency it's more of Mbrakwa. There is a short route from Bremen Sikuma to um, a town called Amanfopong. In the Green Book, the former president, Mahama, announced that this had all been done. Go there. It was not true that he had done it. Now we are trying to get um, the minister to even look at it. There is also a break. All these were recorded as having been done. But it's not the case. You see, what you have to do is that when you complete a project, you don't repeat it in, in, a, in a subsequent budget. But when it is not completed, and you announce in 2017 that you are going to do in 2018, and it's not completed, and you don't anticipate completing that road, it's a major road in 2018, it is only worthy bringing it into 2019 so that you don't lose focus of it. Otherwise, you do a one-year program and all roads that you indicate you do in a year should be done within a year. Even if you have a month to the end of the year, you can't report on that. So there is room for reporting that if there is an uncompleted project, maybe what you should be asking is that what is the level of completion of the road that was announced in 2017? What was it? How does it include that? Does the NS, does the NS, uh, honorable MP, does the NS lie on uh, the finance minister to make that crystal clear that in 2017 we mentioned this, we are 30 percent into it during the mid uh, year review, we are now 35 percent or 45. But you make a blanket statement mentioning the same yes, and, and yeah, yeah, that is what we have to invest in. We can always try that. Let me just one minute. I just want to one minute. I don't need that. So what I'm <laughs> saying to you is that the minister proposes to do some projects. Okay. 
that project may have a lifespan of three years. Okay. And these days, if you look at the reporting of our budget, it's not an annual thing. We have a midterm, we have like three years reported. So what is reported in year one could also be reported in year two, as long as it is not completed. Okay. If it is completed, then you don't need to report it. You rather introduce a new project. A quick is standard, is standard practice. Yes, that's that what I want to help you. As you don't complete, you can report. That's what I want to help you. This road I discussed with the Minister of Roads yesterday, this ten and a half kilometer road, which was awarded in 2016. So I don't see how you keep a 10 kilometer road running over three uh, uh, what periods of budget reporting. You see the point. So when the new administration came, the, the contractor was already on site. They put a hold on the works. So he had to quit site. Then he came back, started the work, submitted a certificate, and he's not being paid. I'll be following that road because he leads to my house. So the, 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 the consultant, consultants tell me that no money has been paid to that. So the Chinese contractor went. In fact, he went with his key managers back to China. So a 10 kilometer road, how do you take three budget years to be reporting on it? Uh, Two and a half, so to speak, to be reporting on the same 10 kilo, if it were uh, uh, 50, 60, 100 kilometer road, fine. But you cannot have justification to be reporting a 10 kilometer road over three I'll budget years. Also come to the yeah. yeah. so uh, so we don't have the whole day, uh, honorable. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we don't have the whole day, and Doc hasn't spoken in a while. And uh, Doc, maybe in two minutes, then I give each one of you the, his final word. Is it that budget reading has become a talk show? You tell the populace what you want and you go away. There is no monitoring mechanism. Whose responsibility will that be? Uh, it's, it's, it's true. Uh, I always tell you that you as, you as, as sessions are very accurate. Now it's like, <clears throat> uh, to a large extent, because I'm a citizen. Yes. The roads you are talking about, maybe if the road didn't pass it to your house, yes. you didn't I know the road you wouldn't have well. known. So who no, does no, the money? I'm MP right? for the area, so I know all the roads. Okay, so who it's, does it's, the money? It's like, it's like um, MPP is not learning from NDC's mistakes as far as road is concerned. Let me tell you, NDC used these uh, roads that have been mentioned by the minister. NDC these rules for politics in 2016 and it couldn't work. MPP has come 2017, 2018. We are shifting it to 2019. Is this a short distance road? So got there too. So I see no reason why we should keep doing politics with this road. So uh, Doc, you've not answered my question. <laughs> Who does the monitoring? Is it yeah. government? Government has the yeah, capacity. I mean, as, as, exactly, but then I think the the supervisory uh, role must be given to traditional authorities if really okay. we want to. Sadly, our time, way. our time is completely up. Doc, you are poised to rebut, <laughs> but can you do that in 30 seconds? Yeah, in fact, I would forgive him and say that oh. this budget that we have oh. is going to allow us to improve on our infrastructure significant infrastructure massive for 2019 let's look forward to that it will cover uh, his rules as well um what is interesting is that the banking sector is going to be to be uh, resource sufficiently so that those that didn't have money like the sister's money she can get the money those who have money for the mfis <laughs> will get the money that is some assurance that we got today there's going to be mortgage financing for the people um so that Later in the year, we can have some little homes in our consequences where we will be proud to own or workers who live there, have worked 20 years, 15 years, can take those mortgages. Any and form of houses. affordable housing. Yes, uh, these days affordable doesn't seem to be the case. <laughs> we've dropped it. Yeah, we've dropped but essentially something. <laughs> Production of food. We have 
excess now. And the the recent launching of the Ghana Community Exchange has come. You see, NPP's who understanding of it's economy more, is to develop the systems by and the structures uh, ex-president Mahama launched the commodity and, and they, they did ever work so let's not so don't say they have launched it no but you know they launched it while yeah. we were in Sydney yeah. it was launched yeah. and so VW is, is coming to Ghana we have automobile so Nissan is coming to Ghana okay. and so let Ghana be hopeful that 2019 all those promises that we made, which we are fulfilling, we will continue to com okay. uh, we complete them. Thank you so much. The Honorable Anthony Effa is MP mm. for Isukuma. Mm. 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 So you are going to give us 30 seconds. Can you do that in 10 seconds? Because okay. our time is up. Yes, I just want the people of Ghana to know that NBC is not against free senior high school. We, 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 we have a superior arrangement to uh, execute it. Uh, it that is, is by getting infrastructure available, pushing the education, uh, the, the schools to the communities so that Get Fund will be able to continue to support education and uh, uh, fund the activities. Okay. But we have crippled Get Fund by capping the Get Fund amount. Okay. That is why we are unable and to pay for the school buildings in the, the MP communities. MP Central and a member of the Finance Committee and Dr. Samuel Wallanyo Mensa, he's an economist uh, with uh, the Institute of Chartered Economics of Ghana. And we also had Honorable Anthony Efa, MP for Isukuma, Oda Ben Brakwa, also a member of the Finance Committee. Uh, so we come your way next week with another edition of the issues. Stay blessed and keep watching GTV. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my